The following program contains spoilers and may include language unsuitable for young audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Ho 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 ho! Good morrow and Merry Christmas to all! And welcome to the Round Room! Ho 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 ho! My name is Chain of Fire, editor at the Cage Wiki and administrator at the Keyhole. Today with me I have Newmans. <laughs> hey all, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> you start with that. <laughs> and and all I'm sorry, every time every time he introduces me as Newmans, it just sounds funny. Well that's your name, is it not? Yeah, but it sounds weird when you say it out loud. Yeah. I get that. I can get that too. That's why it's easier. It's easier to just call myself Nezzy, out loud. And that was Nezzy. And also with me today, the Eric, also Eric. known as Eric. Hey, Eric K. I know. Yes. <laughs> I haven't been. I haven't been here in half a year. So hello. Since yes, our irregular regular, Ari <laughs> is back. Yay! We are all very happy. Yay. It's a Christmas miracle. Yay. I love freaking Luya. <laughs> <laughs> happy Kwanzaa. Alright, so today on the Round Room, we've got... Today is the special mailbag episode. And we'll be getting to that very soon. But first off, let us cover the news of the days. do 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 do, do. Alright, so of course the big news is that this past month, uh... Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix has finally come out. Been about time tomorrow. In the English-speaking countries. And it looks quite beautiful, still. Indeed. Aside from the flat faces, but I'm willing to look past that. And the lack of capes, but I'm willing to look past that. Oh, there it was an addition of a cape, so I think we can be happy about that. One scene. I'm still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so for the most part... There wasn't much new content added to the uh, remix aside from the full cinematic of Kingdom Hearts Recoded, which actually did add some new stuff, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty cool. I think that might be my favorite new part of the remix, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Recoded. Well, of course, uh, besides it coming to America, of course, but I was... Uh... That was one of the things I was looking forward to the most, was the secret endings. I know I was checking both KH13, the wiki, and the KH Insider. See, like, do we have news yet? What, like, when do the subtitles come out? Because <laughs> there, there's a little gap in between when people uh, fan-subbed it, and... Because we didn't have the dubs originally, but when the subs came out, and when just the scenes came out. And I watched both... Now, I watched the scene between Maleficent and Pete in uh, Japanese with no subs. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, but it's probably pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we find out what it was, and it was actually pretty surprising, mm -hmm. because it actually tied into Kingdom Hearts Kai, which, Ooh. you know, who expected that to happen? Yeah. Kingdom Hearts Kai is actually relevant. Yeah, our key lime pie is actually canon. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Canon-ish. Canon-ish. Two point. I forgot about it being called Key Lime Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. All right. So that was one of the secret, se the new scenes that was added to Recoded. And then there was, of course, the new secret ending, which was between uh, young Xehanort and Brig uh, in the, I guess, the prequel scene to Kingdom Hearts 3D. Mm -hmm. That was definitely pretty, pretty big. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, any scene with any of the organization members are pretty big, or with uh, KH Originals are going to be pretty big, but uh, there there wasn't, not a lot actually happened, but it was rather interesting. It definitely got the forms uh, sparking up all new uh, speculation, and uh, definitely got us all wondering about mm -hmm. some things. Because what happened in the, for those who haven't, who have yet to see it yet, first of all, spoilers. Secondly, um, it was 
Sprague and Young Xehanort in Ansem's laboratory. Yeah, the computer room. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, they were having a discussion where Young Xehanort basically said, I don't even know what Xehanort's doing. So, (laughs) that, so, (laughs) They did say a few things. Yeah. So, Xehanort doesn't even know what Xehanort's doing. That's, that's how enigmatic he is. The only thing, the only thing he knows, apparently, is that his Keyblade, or I suppose Master Xehanort's Keyblade, is something very special. Mm -hmm. And harkens back to, like, the earliest days of the Keyblades. Mm -hmm. And if you follow, like, all the different hints, it may have to do with the foretellers from uh, Kingdom Hearts Kai, Mm -hmm. which is pretty serious. Yeah. I'm not sure if it did say it in there, or maybe it was just speculation, but I think it was said that it was, like, one of the first Keyblades or something like that? Yeah. He called it the most ancient. Yeah. Which, of course, with the addition of time travel... Might not mean much, but I'm sure well, it means something relevant. Yes. It's interesting to notice that. Mm-hmm. And the other, you know, interesting part of that scene is that while they're talking on the floor are all of the revived organization members, or the I original guess, six or seven, seven, the original seven, eight, hold on. Well, no, no, we're, no, no, no. We, from two to seven. It, yeah. That's right, Xemnas was not there. Yeah, there's no Xemnas. And Breg is Breg awake. Is talking. And Isa is there. Yeah. Which is, you know, kind of surprising since once Axel wakes up, he's gone. He and Breg are both gone. Yeah. So, and he was saying something along the lines of, it's like, so which one do you want? Mm-hmm. Referring to the uh, knocked out ones on the floor. Yeah, and... Just before it fades out, you can almost hear uh, young Xehanort may or may not have started his answer with the letter S. Mm-hmm. I think it said in the official subtitles that it did start with the letter S. Really? But I didn't see. I didn't see. I could. I could. They that. could have been fan made, of course, too. But so some people are. Uh, some people are speculating about that, even though uh, to others it might be kind of obvious, but. Speculation has some backup too. I was in a, uh, li- I was watching a live stream and we were discussing the secret secret ending. Shout out to Cage Memes, by the way. Um, and they said he might have. Everybody's thinking that he said Psyx, which, first of all, I feel like that would be more the obvious answer. That'd be Psyx because it's like he was gone later. He joined the yeah. organization. You know that. But then they brought up that at that point he would be called Ice. Isa? Isa. Isa or yeah. Isa. And Lee even called him Isa. So that doesn't start with the letter, lever, the letter S. Pardon me. So they thought it might be Sora that was that, that he was going to choose. That's certainly in... I mean, that's not really that far-fetched of an answer, actually. Yeah. If you, if you think about it, like... Because that was in their plans, so... Yeah. But, you know... For me, the biggest disappointment was the fact that we still have not seen Isa's face. What do you mean? I really want to see Isa's face. Oh, in the secret ending? Yeah. Well, we did see him in Dream Drop. I still think that was Saix. I I still believe that that was Saix, not Isa. Yeah, there is a little confusion about at what point do they become somebodies and nobodies in Dream World and crap, because that game was hella twisted. But... But... But, you know, going by the obvious visual cues, um, Zigbar Zigbar is a member of the new organization, Mm -hmm. or at least he is the member that we saw, and Brig is the one who appeared in the secret ending of Recoded. Like, they are very clearly differentiated characters. How so? Uh, Mostly in the hair, actually. Really? Like, you can tell when you're looking at them which one it is. Like, just by looking at their faces. Oh, yeah, I guess... Yeah, now that you mention and it, I guess so. Possibly the ears? I don't actually remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess now that you mention it, um, Zigbar had more of that skunk hair, if you will. The rip, mm-hmm. the black and the white. Yeah. I'm actually... Most of, most of the organization had some visual cues between 
their original form and their nobody form. Mm -hmm. With the exception of... Well... Zell actually... Let's see. Well, a few of the a few of the founders looked really similar, so mm -hmm. it, the visual cues were yeah. harder to pick out. Zeldon and Lexius are a little bit harder. Um, I mean, outside of their costumes, they look rather identical. Yeah, I think probably the ones that are the hardest to pick out are three, Vexen, three, four, and five. And, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Axel and Lee was the obvious. Uh, Marks under his eyes. Hmm. Yeah. Syax and Isa were the X across his face. Um, possibly, we don't know. Right. That's what. That's what would be make the most sense. Probably. Did we ever? I don't know if we talked it about about it in the podcast. Though I might be repeating myself. But did we ever talk about how uh, Isa might have gotten the X on his face? Was that discussed? Uh, I know we talked about the, uh, how we want to, how we're kind of missing the untold stories of the organization members. I don't know if we specifically okay. talked about what, where the scar might have come from. Okay. Because I've always had this speculation where he got his, he's got a scar from his early days in the organization. Do you remember those barriers and days that had like the big X? Uh, yeah, the, the buggy one? thorn, the thorn X's. Yeah. Um, my speculation is that he got, he ran into it really, really hard. <laughs> and it just, like, left a permanent mark on his face. <laughs> and I will be uh, so happy if that is canon. <laughs> wow. Someone needs to draw that. Please, do. Uh, or, like, make it it's into like an MMB into or something. like running into a chain link fence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, some of them have some facial differences, uh, some of them not so obvious, some of them not even apparent, but mm -hmm. maybe they'll make that later? I don't know. Well, we will uh, just have to see. Mm -hmm. do, do you want to know how out of the loop I am out of Kingdom Hearts information? Sure. I didn't, how out of the I, loop? Why not? I didn't even know there was a secret ending. Because I know as soon as the game's like announced to have a secret ending, but I... Don't keep track anymore. <laughs> we miss you, Harry. And, and <laughs> uh, but yeah, I never found out until now, and I just watched it, and I have no clue what is going on. <laughs> did you did you end up playing Dream Drop at all, Harry, by chance? Um, as of late. As of at all. Uh, I played it when it first came out. In Japanese or in English? Both. Oh, okay. And yeah. I haven't played it lately. I've had a saving that I started a Let's Play with uh, Sora in 1995. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I was a part of that. Y yeah. A little bit. Uh, I think it was one video we got through. I think we got through... I thought we got through, like, four of them. Three or four. Mm, yeah, and then it just died out. Yeah. And um, I got my HD Remix Collector's Edition about uh, two weeks ago. A week ago. And... Only played, like, the first three worlds of Birth by Sleep on as Terra, and then uh, haven't touched it since. Wow. Well, yeah. welcome back to the loop. We will <laughs> throw you for a loop. Because, uh, yeah, it's it's quite a universe that Kingdom Hearts has. Yes. That it is. But, on to the next uh, topic. Yeah, so, the other news. aside from... Aside from 2.5 coming out, uh, I believe, what was it? It was some kind of event. Um, uh, there was a certain event. It was the San Diego, I think it was San Diego, or San Francisco. It was something in California. It was a launch event for 2.5. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, I was actually in London. Not London. I was in the UK when it happened. Mm -hmm. And oh, okay. I had a friend who offered me... To go to the London uh, launch party, launch event. But I had to decline because I was busy that week. Oh. I would have liked to have gone to get some nice merchandise for my collector room thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and apparently they had... Uh, it was there that they had uh, some more production footage from Kingdom yeah. Hearts 3. 
Yeah, I heard about that. I heard... Uh... And apparently they're trying really hard there and doing a pretty good job of uh, keeping any leaked footage from coming out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they did. But we've, but we've heard, like, a number of things. I've, mm-hmm. I've read uh, on, I think it was Kingdom Hearts Insider, that mm-hmm. there was a few... Uh, they didn't show anything really new, as in like new the new clothes or something like mm-hmm. that. I yeah, remember they recycled they... the new the old ones. Yeah, I remember they had him in like the wisdom form outfit. I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm okay with that, really. Mm-hmm. It's something. It's better than nothing. It is something. So we're, yeah. I at this point since we have, I don't know if Jump Fest is still running or that's over, but at this point since we didn't get any information besides that and that was very uh raw footage i mm-hmm. do not see three coming out next year at all mm-hmm. i will be very surprised if it does maybe late in the year japan but i'm still thinking 2016 at least unfortunately but that's what i'm saying on the other hand we did get hinted a few a few things mm-hmm Yes, we did. We got a uh, place that, sh- of course, none of this is confirmed for anything. This is very raw stuff. So, uh, it was it was something like white houses. Um, there's a bunch of white houses and a place called Cable Town, which interesting name because that immediately uh, made me think of the Timeless River. Which was like old cartoony stuff. So, yeah, Cable Town. True. I'm like, maybe they do cable shows. Like as time pro- like you know, as time progresses, so does in the other worlds, I guess. Since you can't really have a part two to uh, the story in Timeless River, where like you can in. Uh, Wonderland and Olympus Coliseum and such to continue the movie because it's just a bunch of little ones. Maybe they're doing something with some of the animated cable shows, which might be interesting to see, but it might also be very scary to see. We don't want yeah, we don't want another be, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it would be very tricky, I think, for them to pull off. Yeah. To like try to merge together a whole bunch of Disney Channel shows. Mm-hmm. Mm. But Namora did say that nothing is off limits. Including Marvel and it's uh, a very, it's a very ominous Star Wars se- sentiment. Yeah, so that should be interesting. Yep. To see, it also it also showed Sora next to a window, um, and there were chess pieces or something along the, those lines. I think on the windowsill, and some of them were shaped like Mickey's head. Hmm. So, um, I don't know if that, I don't know if you can get more real than, say, Code Geass confirmed for Kingdom Hearts 3 than that. <laughs> either, either that or they're going to have a Kingdom Hearts chess set for sale. Oh, that'd be interesting. I, I would buy that. Like, I'm, well, I'm awful at chess, but I would buy that because I, because why not? Who, who would be the two kings? Well, the the king and the queen would probably be just it'd probably be this the same thing only just black and white or tan or red and white or something. <clears throat> you know, but to see like I Mickey feel like and they, Minnie. I feel like they could pull off like heartless and nobody chess pieces pretty easily. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Like I don't know, the dark side as the king or something. I feel like Shadows dark side might be a rook. Like oh, have Ansem have Ansem be the king. And the or Ansem's Dark guardian Sun. thing, yeah. And you know, of course, the shadows are pawns. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, the creepers are the pawns, and the twilight thorn is of uh, the rooks. Oh, that'd be cool, like a heartless versus nobody type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, make it happen, Square Enix. Do it. We're waiting. I would buy like two of those. Just kidding, I'd buy one of those. But so that's. About all, uh, all the major news. All the major news that was given. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts Kai is still updating. Mm-hmm. There was... Every so often, it gives a tiny little piece of possibly story. Mm-hmm. Um, possibly new merch. I don't know if there's any new merchandise released. 
think I think the last thing I heard about Cage was the thing. Uh, what the? Oh, I love that, the thing. The thing we just talked about the chess pieces and that the expos. Uh, uh, um, it. dive to the heart T-shirt. That's about it. Um, more manga. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's about it. That's about everything important. Has it been mentioned that um, there's a chance that the HD remixes would be would be going on Xbox One and PS4? I did hear something about them bringing it to PS4, since that's now basically going to be current gen. Yeah, that's pretty console. speculative, yeah. though, from what I've heard. I've also yeah. heard that uh, Dream Drop HD was also uh, a possibility. Yeah, uh, Nomura, said, uh, Nomura didn't rule that out. He said there is a chance it would mm-hmm. be happening. Yeah, because yeah, why would he want to leave that one out? Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He didn't want to leave it out. Yeah, what I would like to see is have um, Dream Drop with the actual Days game and the actual re- recoded game in a bundle pack. Mm. That'd be as in, uh, like not just the cutscenes. Uh, so the, the actual game, right? I think that's asking a little bit too much because they did say they would Probably. have to recreate the games from scratch. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I I guess that's true. Yeah, could... on the other hand, on the other hand, they did do that for Chain of Memories. That's true. basically well, they they still had re though that they could go off of these guys. From now, um, I don't think that um, this is especially days. I don't think that the com not the combat system, but you know how you have the panels and everything. Yeah, I don't think that could work on a console. Um, not saying it couldn't work, but I, it could work, it work on well. Wii U. Mm, yeah, with a touchpad. Yeah, I can with... see that. And I guess if you consider, like, connectivity, like, Vita connectivity, you could have it on the PS4 also. But, I mean, if if they were to go back to, like, I don't know, KH1 uh, battle system, I wouldn't mind that. As for Recoded, they could just do what they could, do something similar to Birth by Sleep with uh, the Recoded commands, because re- I feel like Recoded would be a lot easier to adapt to to uh, PS4 than Days would. Mm. But that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, I, I'm not a developer by any means. Maybe it is easier for Days. Maybe it sucks for both. I don't know. You know, you know what surprises me? Is that for the last three Lightning games, Final Fantasy 13, mm-hmm. 13 2, mm-hmm. Lightning uh-huh. Returns, yeah. uh, for 13 and 13 2, they had a special edition PS3 that was purchasable. Uh-huh. For Lightning Returns, they had a sweepstakes for it. Oh, yeah. Um, but for Kingdom Hearts, you haven't seen... you. We basically haven't seen a console come out of Japan. And if we have, it was a handheld. There has never yeah. been a Kingdom Hearts home console yeah. created that's, so far. That's true. Was that's there a... a per, I thought I saw... Per, this was probably... Fan made. I don't know if it was official, but was there a PS4 controller that was Kingdom Hearts designed, or was that not official? No, not official. Oh, okay. Because I remember the collector's edition of the DS coming, uh, 3DS coming out or came out for Dream Drop. But yeah, there's there is the hmm. um there's themes too for PS3. Yeah, yeah they had. That's the, not quite the same thing. Yeah. HD 1.5 theme. I don't know about 2.5, but I would guess it had a theme. Yeah, two point five um, did have a theme. I was saw it, it was it with the collection, or did you buy, uh, get to get it off the market? The um, I think you had to. I think you had to unlock it through the game, like you did one point uh, five. All oh, right, yeah, I haven't and, touched that game. <laughs> and it was yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it was the uh, it was one of the puzzles. I don't know what the new name. Oh yeah, we got English translations with two point five as well. So a lot of the puzzles were renamed. Uh the two point, some of the, the the Kingdom Hearts two puzzles, like edge yeah, the and final whatnot. mix puzzles. Right. Yeah, it's no longer like edge. It's and the uh, there's something there's something else that was a bunch named. I don't remember. Uh, 
the new heartless new yeah. uh, mater- uh, synthesis materials. Oh, right. The mm-hmm. uh, elusive illusion or something like that. Some new abilities. Yeah, it's the rounds in the Mirage Arena that were added. Right. Uh, oh, and oh, and the keyblade. Some of the some, of the, some of the dubs for some stuff was just very big surprise. Oh yeah, yeah. the the Mirage Arena keyblades went from Crown Unlimited to something Royal Radiance. Royal Radiance. Royal mm-hmm. Radiance. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't fit it in my opinion. <laughs> nah. Mirage Arena is not very regal or royal at all. It's yeah. tech. It's techy. Yeah. yeah, and they na- renamed uh, the Master Keeper to the Mas- uh, Master's, Master's Defender. Defender. Which I is, actually like that one. Uh, I, wanna... I feel like it's a lot more translated than Master Keeper is. Which the, remi- yeah. Master, I mean, it makes sense. Master Defender. Yeah, I kind of like yes. that. It's, it, it is nice. It is a nice name. On the other hand, they changed Armor of the Master to Armor of Ericus. Yeah, or Ericus's armor or something. That that seems like really unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I think it was just like they didn't pay. Uh, yeah, it was called Armor of Ericus. Um, I don't think they just didn't pay attention to the old names, so they're like, okay, this is just what we're translating it to. I don't know. Whatever, guys. I don't know who translates or how they translate, but they, that's what they did. They also fixed Man. the uh. Um, in Timeless River, there was something that was misspelled, and they fixed that. So, I'm glad they caught that. Good job, them. Mm. But with that, I think we're going to take a halftime break. So, on to the next topic. Moving on to, uh, this, since it is the... Christmas holiday season, we thought we would share some things that are on our Kingdom Hearts wish list. Things we want to see for the future, or just we would like to or, uh, come out. Or things that we don't want to see for the future. Yes, or some things that we just don't need and don't want coming from Nomura. So, since my list is a little bit bigger, uh, I think I will start. So, um... Recently on Twitter, Kingdom Hearts Insider has been starting a trend. Whether or not it will actually work um, is another story. But they've been using the hashtag Kai to the West. And I think um, releasing Kingdom Hearts Kai to uh, America and the European PAL regions, Australia, etc. would be a wonderful thing to have. That would be pretty, that would be pretty amazing. It might take a lot of work all things considered, but that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I mean, we wouldn't get the, I don't know, it's been going on for, what, a year now or so? A uh, now? yeah, a little over a year. Okay. Well, I mean, we wouldn't get, like, any of the special items for the first year and a half, but hey, you know, if they were to start doing it now, that'd be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- something else that I would like to see on my wish list is, um... With two, this was kind of on my 2.5 wish list, but since that's out and it is not present, and no, it is not capes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> although that would be great too. Something I would like to see when 2.5 was going to come out, I will. I wanted to see a 14th battle in the Cavern of Remembrance, and as soon as I say 14th, I do believe everyone knows who I'm referring to. Yeah. The, orga- uh, the organization Moogle. Uh, that would be very, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a very interesting fight. You just start throwing like frost shards at you. <laughs> Has there ever been a fight against a Moogle? Um, I don't. Th- well, I haven't played much Final Fantasy, but I can't say there was a fist fight or like an actual RPG fight. But I know he he threatens to stab you in nine if you summon him <laughs> too much. <laughs> but uh, and. But the real battle we would like to see is a battle with Xion as Sora. Um, just as how, how that would affect Sora's characterization, um, maybe it would put him back on track because, you know, 3D kind of screwed that over a bit. Um, but just kind of him going through um, having to battle her again in Final Form. I know it'd be 
rather emotional for players, um, especially fans of Days. But that'd be something I would kind of like to see. So you would want to see Sora versus Shion? Yes. Or just, you know, yeah, that's what I'd love to see. I mean, do I, can I, if it doesn't work out in the plot, then I don't really want to see it. I think it would have worked well in 2.5. But, you know, it's a wish list. I say what I want. It's my wish list. Yes. <laughs> but uh, if you want to go with your first item yeah. on your wish list, what do you have Actually, in store? Yeah. Actually, since you are since you brought up the battle with Shion, mm -hmm. it would have been really nice, and I guess would still be really nice, if we had some kind of... I guess this was a disappointment from back when 1.5 came out, but that we didn't see the fight between Roxas and Shion. Mm -hmm. when she transformed into all her forms, because that would have been a great thing to turn into a cinematic. But they did not do that, mm -hmm. which was, I think, a pretty big missed opportunity. Yeah, that that, that kind of was. I mean, um, they kind of re fixed that a little bit with Recoded. So they, they realized what they kind of did with the text and just skipping of stuff. Um, but that would have been a really cool thing to have in 1.5. Um, I, although I am glad they did remaster Vector to the Heavens, because uh, that was beautiful. All right, so item number one for me. Mm -hmm. um, so in Kingdom Hearts 3, I would like to see the return. Uh, this was hinted in that uh, released production footage from uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. They hinted that there would be returning of drive forms. I kind of want to see new drive forms. Yeah, that would be really nice to see uh, new drive forms. Uh, maybe something, I don't know how well it would work with the whole Keyblade transformation thing, but each of the drive forms in Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of has to do with Sora's heart merging with someone else's. So it would be kind of cool to see drive forms for the different world party members, like a drive form if he were to go with Auron or something. Now that would be pretty interesting. I don't know, That that might be a... A bit that would be definitely awesome to see. That probably would be a bit more than they'd be willing to do, but I would like to see something like that. Mm -hmm. Or, or I kind of would like to see. So uh, the tri forms in Kingdom Hearts two were basically boost attack, boost magic, mm -hmm. boost both, and boost both a lot. Right? <laughs> yeah, and then but and then and then limit and, and then limit and deduct anti. everything for anti. Yeah. Um. So I would kind of like to see uh, more interesting variations, like maybe uh, dry forms that are more like uh, the Final Fantasy jobs. So like mm. Brave form would be more like a uh, fighter or knight. Uh, there would be a black mage or white mage. Maybe well, not white mage fun. since Sora's never been the supporting type. Yeah. Maybe something that boosts your uh, white mage abilities maybe? I don't know how well that would work with because the battle system, but... Because in Kingdom Hearts 2, the dry forms were, like, fighter, black mage, and then red mage, and then stronger red mage. Mm -hmm. Red um, sage, I guess. Yeah, that'd be kind of something interesting to uh, put out there. Something that boosts some, uh, stats besides attack and magic. Maybe a, de maybe a defender one would be kind of nice. Maybe. Actually, what's interesting that... I did not actually know for the longest time is that the dry forms did not actually really affect any stats. Mm -hmm. It was just uh, the abilities that they had enhanced certain skill sets mm -hmm. that Sora had. And that was actually pretty interesting. So I think that if they try to expand on that and like specialize Sora in different ways, mm -hmm. I think that would be pretty cool. Maybe... Um... Because with Kingdom Hearts 2, the the abilities you had with um, uh, each form were already equipped, and you couldn't change any of them, and you got all of them right away, save for the growth abilities. Yeah. So maybe it would be cool to kind of mix and match and unequip and equip and do a little bit with the dry form abilities. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Kind of... I kind of uh, imagine dry forms 
becoming a little bit like the paradigms from uh, Final Fantasy XIII. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that'd be kind of cool. Oh, if we were to get, like, a... Uh, pardon my pronunciation of this, but the Crystarium from thirteen. Uh, yep. If you could level up your drive forms that way, that would be pretty neat to do. I have a battle system cool. similar to that. To give you more control over how they grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And come up with, I don't know, like, drive points or something as a separate uh, counter of some sort. Sure. Yeah. And on to the next item of the on the list, um, with th- this is something that will definitely have to be in Kingdom Hearts three because they said uh, three would be the end of Xehanort and the Dark Seeker Chronicles. Um, I'd like to see. I'd like to have a fight with every incarnation of Xehanort because we got to fight a lot of them in Dream Drop. Um, but I'd love to. Love to fight uh, Master Xehanort as Sora or any of the other playable characters in that. I'd but, be surprised if that didn't happen at least once. Yeah. Um, even if we... I mean, if we got to fight most of them, I'd be happy. But if we got to fight all 13, that would be wonderful. <laughs> even though we don't know who the other missing ones are. And then post, and then and then post game, you get to fight all thirteen in a row. Oh gosh, like uh, similar to Final Fantasy XII's, like the uh, what do they call that? It was something with the international release where it was like um, something similar to the Hades Cup in a sense, where you would you would fight certain bosses and then go to the next tier and fight those ones. It would be all the mega hard ones, but. Um... Maybe something along those lines, just something like the cavern. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, so it's like the new the new organization cavern and then the old organization cavern kind of thing. <laughs> <sighs> oh, they'd have to put the new one in a different in a different world, I think. Yeah, they might world. have to do that, or like have it be destroyed or something. What was another another secret basement? Yes, because <laughs> we don't have enough. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Uh, but, um, was, was, I I would also like to, something that I just thought of, I would like to see the Cavern of Remembrance explained, because, I mean, the cave, that's natural, the Heartless getting in there, that's fine, but somebody, a computer just does not spawn out of the earth, that just doesn't happen, somebody has to set that up. I actually have a headcanon about that. Oh, what's your headcanon? Okay, so, we know that the organization did... A couple of different things. Mm-hmm. First of all, we know that they experimented on memories. That was the main uh, research that they did in Castle Oblivion, aside from looking for the room of waking. Of waking. Mm-hmm. The other thing that they did, which no one, I think, remembers, is they had, in days, they had the hollow missions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. So basically... A virtual simulation of memories of, I guess, Roxas's missions that they mm-hmm. could play over. And what I'm thinking is that the data rematches, the the data replicas... Oh yeah, that was the other thing. They also did the uh, replica um, project, which basically... Mm. Um, yep. Creating replicas from memories of existing uh, people or nobodies. Mm-hmm. Hence, Shion, Riku, and if you read the manga, um, Vexen clones. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm thinking is that the data, that the replica data is actually a culmination of those technologies that basically archived the information about each member. And it's like continually updating, which is why you can't access them until after you've defeated a member, because it's still updating. Okay. So it takes Sora's memories of um, his battles with each member Mm -hmm. and adds it to the uh, stored data of the uh, the member's fighting ability at their peak and then combines it into into an actual fightable battle. Yeah, okay. I can actually accept that headcanon. I... um... I was just about to say, when you were saying something along the lines of uh, that the organization did it, 
I was I was wondering uh, how like Roxas's would be taken when he was dual wielding and in Dive to the Heart and Axel's when he was in the Twilight Town basement. But if he were to be intertwined with Sora's memories, because Sora turns on the computer, right? So I could really see that happening. Head cannon accepted. Awesome. But that that would uh, yeah, that's something that if they could actually like come out and say that, that would be nice too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think we can say that another item on our wish list is more organization stuff. Yes, being a rather large fan of the organization myself and everything surrounding that, um, that that was the, one of the main reasons I was looking forward to Dream Drop was just to find out more about the organization, especially when we got that teaser, which played at the very beginning of Dream Drop. I think it was like the first cutscene where it said. My name is Ansem, and he, <laughs> he stabbed Brag. So, yeah, so anything concerning Organization 13 would be wonderful. Because mm-hmm. there's so much that we don't have. Mm-hmm. I loved playing as them, and I mean playing as them on the PS3 with the new battle system would be awesome. I loved fighting them at, like, really, really high levels. So if we could have something more, that'd be wonderful. Mm-hmm. I guess until then we have to make do with the organization in the manga. Yeah, that that is one thing that I found rather interesting because the manga came after the games, obviously, and it was fun to see how they played off, especially with the day's manga, how they played off the different characters, like played off their personalities more extenuatingly. Yeah, um, I've never actually read any of the manga, like, front to back or anything, but I've seen different pages and screenshots and whatnot, and it looks pretty awesome. I have... (laughs) I'm eventually going to pick it up and read it when I have the time. But it's kind of a fun thing to do. I'm I'm glad they did that. Yeah. Uh, Something I would like to see on my wish wish list would be more uh, Final Fantasy cameos, of course. That would be nice. Um... My f- You've had a number of missed opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, I- I'd like to see the three uh, 10-2 fairies not be fairies. But, you know, if that stays that way, that's all right. I would, I'd really like to see uh, Balthier and Fran from Final Fantasy XII, because they're some of my all-time favorite Final Fantasy characters. Those would be two pretty badass characters. Yeah. Of course, they'd have to censor, censor Fran's costume a little bit. <laughs> but uh I think but they were my fa- they were my favorite Final Fantasy twelve characters. They really stood out and I just love them interacting with one another. Both of you are trying to like say, Oh, I'm the main character of this game or something along the lines of, Oh, I'm not the main character in this game, but I'll help you out or something would be really funny. Um, are there any like cameos that you'd like to see? Um either from fa- Final Fantasy or something else? That's a good question. But off the top of my head, I can't think of any. I would like to see. Uh, I would finally like to see them bring in Laguna from Final Fantasy VIII, mm-hmm. since they kind of had him on standby and then decided not to bring him in. Mm-hmm. But yeah. here's here's what I want to see. Mm-hmm. I want to see Leon meet Cipher. That's what I want to see. That's oh, that should that... be interesting. <laughs> I... And then to make it more interesting, add selfie. <laughs> Leon, Cypher, and Selfie. That'd be kind of strange, considering they're all in, like, the different stages of life. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I mean, that's what it at least appears to be. Yeah. I kind of want someone to ask ask either Leon or Cypher where they got this scar in their face. (laughs) And just just see what their answer is. Be like, well, I I don't talk about it. (laughs) That's... No, that's a no-no. We don't, we don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it would be inter- interesting to kind of go into that, like, why they're in the different stages of life. Like, Selfie's a little kid, uh, Cypher's in his, like, teens, and then Leon's in, I want to say, his 20s or something. Okay. I could be completely off by their ages, but that's what it looks like to me, at least. It does basically look like that. Yeah. Also, uh, since we're on that, Aaron. And Yuna, Riku, and Ping. Yeah. Or at least Yuna and Riku. Mm-hmm. That would be uh, a fun little <laughs> adventure. Like, why the heck are you guys there? What? Uh, I don't... Just... 
you guys got very small since the last time I was alive. Yeah, it's like, oh, you've shrunk. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean, with the end of, in the credits of Kingdom Hearts 2, I doubt we'll be seeing Auron again. I know it had something to do with Final Fantasy VIII. I haven't actually played VIII myself. But I know there was a, an emotional scene for eight players from what uh, I've seen. Ten. Or ten. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Wow. Good job, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, pl- I did play a little bit of ten, but I've yet to pick it up again. Um, But I'd like to see a little more nine characters as well. Because we got VV, and that's about it. I think mm-hmm. he was the only nine character we got. So something yeah, like Zidane reason... steal something out of Sora's pocket and him chasing after him would be kind of fun. That would be cool. I think the reason why uh, Vivi's the only one is because he's the only... Because Final Fantasy IX was one of the ones that Nomura did not design the characters. Oh, uh, okay. Like, I would like to see them take more chances with characters that he did not design. But mm-hmm. uh, that was the reason. Oh, I did not I didn't know that. Um, well, with characters that he designed, maybe a 14 cameo once... Or, sorry, 15 cameo once that... Uh... Decides to come out whenever in well, 25 years. Well, we'll uh, see which one comes out first, Kingdom Hearts 3 or Final Fantasy 15. I'm going to place my bets on Kingdom Hearts 3, but you never know. Ah, anything could happen. Um, but I'd like to see somebody like uh, Noctis or something like that make a cameo. Just because from the trailers, he looks really cool. I don't know his personality whatsoever, but his fighting abilities are cool, and that's good enough for me, <laughs> I guess. Fair enough. That actually, I actually do have a cameo I want to see. No, oh, yeah, go ahead. Gilgamesh. Oh yes. Oh, how can I forget Gilgamesh? <laughs> oh, it I would w- fit so well since he's clearly trying to get a uh, Keyblade to add to his collection. Yes, if he were to make then, an appearance, oh. And then he ends up taking uh, the wooden Keyblade. <laughs> oh, that would that'd be pretty awesome. That is one of my. Uh, Biggest wants. I completely forgot to that add that on my wish list. But if he were to be a boss, I'd want him as a boss. Um, maybe replacing yes. Sephiroth as the super boss in three. Uh, that would be that would be perfect. Uh, yes, that needs to happen. Namura, do it. Make it happen. <laughs> uh, maybe um, kind of going going a little bit into the next my next wish list item. Maybe uh-huh. some. There aren't a lot of games, at least to my knowledge, there probably are more, but there aren't a lot of Square Enix games outside of Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and there aren't a lot of... Okay, let me put it this way. There's not a lot of series outside of Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, to my knowledge. So having The World Ends With You worked really well in 3D, I thought. So maybe something like uh, Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross making a, an appearance maybe just characters or something but i think some reference to that because i know that was a really big fan favorite back when it came out so having yeah. something along those lines would be awesome to have mm-hmm. that would be good mm-hmm. i'll tell you what they can use though i think we brought it up in one of our maybe our first couple episodes they cannot do oh shoot i already forgot the name of that series um, uh, was it a the, Square Enix series? Yeah, it's the one that's really bloody and gory. Was it? Oh, was that Watch Dogs? Was that Square Enix? Or am I stupid? Oh, that was. But that that was not the one I was thinking of. Oh. But that's actually. I don't see Watch Dogs at all. <laughs> um, mm, Dragon Quest? No, it wasn't Dragon Quest. Dragon Age? I don't think that was Square. Was that Square Enix? Hang on. Square Enix Wiki. Go. Um, I feel like there was another game that Square Enix had done recently after Watch Dogs. Was it to- was Tomb Raider? Square I don't know Enix? if that was after Watch Dogs, but they did do that one. Oh, well, yeah. Although, I, I don't really see Tomb Raider in uh, Kingdom Hearts at all, just because of the more mature themes in there. Ah, uh, of course, uh, another, you can call me stupid again, but... Uh, was The Last of Us anything to do with Square Enix, or am I recalling Ooh, bad things um, again? I feel like there was, there was a rather mature game that came out. Very familiar. You may have drank Drakengard, that was the one. Drakengard, okay. Hitman. 
Oh! Sleeping dogs. That was... Did I say sleeping dogs? I said watch dogs. I meant sleeping dogs. But, uh, watch... You said watch guard? Or, what, what, what was the one you said? Dragon guard. Dragon guard, thank you. That's, I know absolutely the... nothing about that. That is a... You look it up on your own time, but it is really, really, really beyond Kingdom Hearts rating. Oh, okay. Oh, something uh, a little more Very recent premature. that I might like to see that was rather popular. Bravely Default making a cameo experience, uh, cameo appearances. Yeah. I'd like to see that. That would be nice. Another game on my list I have yet to play, but I'm getting there. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a big list. Um, but yeah, maybe some of their other Square Enix works would be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, um, I would say so. Yeah. Another All thing right. on my wish list that I would like to see would be, this might sound a bit strange, but, uh, I would like to see more of Kyrie. Like, that would be nice. Doing something useful. <laughs> besides sitting on Destiny Islands waiting for Sora and going to school waiting for Sora and getting kidnapped waiting for Sora because she is with Namine she escaped and she was like ready to take on Syax and that was really cool and I really want to see her do more yes um, basically so I want I want more Kyrie doing something the odds are pretty good considering um, what we've seen hinted in the other games mm-hmm Specifically at the end of uh, Dream Drop Distance. Oh, yeah, with uh, her becoming a Keyblade Master. So well, maybe... Yeah, go, going in for training at yeah. least. It'd be fun to see her and Lee kind of uh, going at it, like training together. Yeah, getting some action. Mm-hmm. All right. I got... Here's uh, another item on my list. Mm-hmm. I want to see much less cloud. Much less cloud? That's a very... We've had said. a lot of cloud angst in the Kingdom Hearts series. I think we've had enough. Mm-hmm. You know, now that you bring that up, uh, that is something that has been done of a lot. He, he was even in, like, Recoded. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he didn't do... It, do- it doesn't help that every time they bring up Olympus Coliseum, they almost always bring up Cloud again. Mm-hmm. But it would be... You know, for being in a lot of the games uh, thus far, it would be he—he um, he didn't have much of a purpose besides I need to fight Sephiroth and I have darkness inside me. <laughs> yeah, and make the fan girls scream. <laughs> That's about it. I want to say that he is the most cameoed Final Fantasy character outside of the Moogles. Uh, I could be wrong, though. He is... I'm, it sounds pretty close to being... Well, maybe Chugabos, but not by much. Yeah. Uh, not including Kai. Oh my gosh, he's in Kai. <laughs> he is in Kai. He's in Kai. But he's been in uh, ten different... He's been in ten games. Um, that's including all the Final Mixes, remakes, and huh. such. But he's in. Bit, he's been in ten different games. Uh the first one, Chain of Memories, two, Recoded, and Recoded, being the vanilla versions. So he's been in... And Kai. And, and Kai, of course, and their respective remakes. But, so he's in a majority of the imp- of them. The only really important ones that he hasn't been in were Dream Drop, Birth by Sleep, and Days. So it was cool that they brought in Zack, though. Maybe we could have some something come up with Cloud and Zack, but not something that Cloud hasn't already done, which is, I'm here for Sephiroth and the darkness. Hmm. I'm okay. Yeah. Darkness. Yeah. But yeah, much much less Cloud might be a good thing for the series. Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe an actual storyline for the Final Fantasy characters besides show up, do something, and leave. Also... Because yep. it's kind of, from what I can tell, it's kind of a mess for them. Um, Pretty just much. Con- just connecting all the stories and relating that mm-hmm. back to Final Fantasy, it seems a, like a bit of a mess. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they'll actually have an ar- overarching story for them. But it'd be nice to see. Mm-hmm. Alright, moving on to the next topic. Something 
that was brought up a lot during the Kingdom Hearts 2 era and a little bit into the days was, uh, days era, was the mention of Riku's nobody. And how since Sora has nobody and Kairi has a nobody, uh, Riku deserves his own. And I think that's something that isn't quite necessary. I mean, that sounds but, more of a, um, a what-if situation. That's not something that's likely to happen in the storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually some speculation that I saw um, two minutes ago in the back of my head uh, <laughs> <laughs> that possibly Riku's nobody uh, is a part of the new organization. Perhaps. I don't that know. Be, that would be... Huh. I mean, that would... I would be curious to see how they would wrangle something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'm sure they could do it easily, being who they are, but... I mean, it uh, sounds really extra timey-wimey. Yeah, wibbly-wobbly and such. Yeah. Um, but I think you could probably play off of the... Since he was exposed to the darkness in the first game and stuff, you could probably pull something there. I don't know. It would be interesting if they you know, created something like that, at least for a merchandise, even if they couldn't fit that into uh, a game. Mm-hmm. Like a not or a manga or something, like a non-canon thing. Yeah. That'd, that'd be kind of fun, you know? It would get kind oh. of s strange, but... By the way, uh, we were talking about this in the first part mm -hmm. of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We, I, I brought up the uh, different visual cues between the organization members and their human forms. Yeah. Uh, I was actually wrong about, or I rather forgot about a couple of them. Mm -hmm. It's actually, there's actually a pretty obvious cube for all of them except for two uh, that we know of. Okay. Uh, so, actually for most of them, it's the hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know Xemnas' hair is very different from uh, Xehanort's. Yeah, and the kind of, you know, most everything else. <laughs> yeah, and we know that Brig and... Zigbar. The difference is the white streaks in Zigbar's hair. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Zaldin has these uh, crazy dreadlocks, or I guess that might be what they are. Mm -hmm. I think so. That's that's what I call them, at least. Yeah, and Dylan does not. Really? I guess he didn't make much of an appearance, but I kind of thought he did. I guess I didn't pay attention much to that. I mean, it might have been... I'm going to look up the picture real quick. It might have been just because that was what the uniform they had as guards was. Like, they had to have hair that was like that, but... Oh, no. yeah, you, I, yeah his, his hair seems to be pulled back more into a ponytail. He still has, like, one hair that's kind of... Oh, they have a name for it, but it's... Uh, I think it's, like, a togane or something? I'm probably really off. But it's, like... Uh, the hair that you might see on anime characters or something, that's... Th their hair is kind of pulled back. They've got one in the front, like Edward Elric or Saber or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so in the cutscene where where they're lying on the floor after they've been revived, he has that hairstyle again. Okay. Dylan. So there's that. And then for Yenzo and Zexion, I didn't mm -hmm. realize this for the longest time, but there actually is a difference in the color of their hair. Really? Yeah. Is Zexion's, like, darker? Zexion's hair is actually a blue-gray, while uh, Yenzo's hair is, like, a very flat gray. You don't... Oh, okay. It's not something you notice unless you're actually looking for it, but if you compare them side to side, there's, like, a very clear difference. You know, I'm looking at it, and, uh, you're right, it's, it's a lot less blue than, uh, Zexion's. Mm-hmm. And we know that... So the exceptions are Vexen and Lexius, which mm. we can't really see a difference mm -hmm. on their hairstyle or really any other feature. Although um, Lexius is actually much bulkier than, than Elias. Elias. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, I don't know if this is just the angle of the render. I'm looking at Elias's render, and his... I could be wrong on this, of course. The His hair kind of goes out in all directions um, instead of going into the same direction like Lexius kind of was like all that's going in one direction whereas the other ones are like some spikes on top, some on the side huh. but that that could be it 
Maybe not. Hmm. Like I said, it could be the angle of the render. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think I looked at it. It's it's hard to be sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at Evan, and I'm looking at Vexen. And, of course, this could be the render again, but I'm pretty sure it is the render. But Vexen's appears to be less gray than Evan's. Hmm, maybe. Got the same eye color, nose shape, mouth. It's and strange to, uh... See, it's a little strange to be doing this. <laughs> a like little bit. Looking at the shape of his nose and everything. Yeah, for, for the most of... For the ones that we can see, they're not all that well hidden. Mm-hmm. Like, the one with the most subtle difference is actually Lee, who has the little tattoos under his eyes. Mm -hmm. Or, Axel has the tattoos. Yeah, although that one was a bit more, that one was actually, I don't know if he actually said it, but the way it was cut, presented, it was almost obvious Yeah. to it. And then, of course, Roxas and Sora is just completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But besides that, uh, we don't have anybody else left in the organization to compare to. Yeah, we didn't really get a good look at Isa, like we said. Yeah, so... He could probably not have the scar or something. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look at the render, but... Anyway, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. All right. And also something kind of going off that, I'd like to see the stories behind how they... Lo like, the process that went along to losing their hearts. Like, we know that Xehanor did it, but... Yeah. It'd be like, okay, how did he get them in all the rooms, and how, how did Isa and Lee end up there, and what happened to the missing five, nine, ten, yeah, eleven, the five, well, missing four, uh, missing f Demix, Larxine, Marluxia, Luxord, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, yep. yep. So the the unaccounted missing four. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see them be doing that. Another thing that I th that I thought would be really cool to see would be either in certain battles or like maybe a, maybe a new drive form type thing. Um, having playable characters such as uh, Sora, Kyrie, Lee, kind of switching between their uh, somebody forms and their nobody forms. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that could be just on command or something or during certain battles, but I think it'd be kind of cool to be, to see Sora, like, do a flip, come down as Roxas, beat the crap out of Xemnas, and then form back into Sora. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Two other quick things. Uh, one is a return to the main menu button in-game, so we don't have to reset the PlayStation or Xbox or whatever <laughs> you happen to be playing it on. Yeah. Yeah, they started adding that to the, at least to the Nintendo Yeah, uh, they did that with... Yeah, days and recoded, I think. But they and, still uh, didn't do that with 2.5 and 1.5, I think. Like, uh, in-game. Yeah, you have to do a soft reset with, like, holding down the buttons. Yeah. Whatever it was. And the last thing on my list is Keyblade Armor for um, some of the other characters, like Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Yeah. Even if, so. even if it's just merchandise, we want to see it. Mm-hmm, Yeah. I mean, you did it to Batman, you did it to... He even did it, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this was official or not, but I think he did it to Darth Vader, too. I really? thought I saw a picture. Um, but you did it to Batman, you did it to Catwoman. You can do it to your own characters, too. It's all right. I feel like, I feel like Darth Vader's Keyblade armor would just be his regular armor, only with horns. Horns and a top. cape. Or, well, he has, he has a, a cape, but... He has a cape. A, a, like a squarer cape versus a rounder cape, I guess. More swept back. Mm -hmm. And since those are Christmas lists, we will now send them to Tetsuya Nomura. Uh, I mean Santa. Santa Nomura. <laughs> and maybe something will be done about them. But since we have no more things on our wish lists for now, we shall be moving on to the mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah, mail time, mail time. Anyway, <laughs> so special thanks to... The people that sent these in, uh, I will uh, call them out accordingly. These questions come from the users and people themselves of what they want to hear answered and said. So, the first question comes from... Shoot, who's that from? That was from Roxas Nobody. I'm pretty sure. 
So, if you were in charge of a story, which character would you want to kill off for reals? Mm-hmm. Who needs to die when they're killed? Okay. Well, can I, hmm. uh, I'm, I got... Okay, first of all, there's the obvious answer of, um, Zaldin. Zaldin? Zaldin needs to die a hundred times over. Yes, just, are he's you saying that based on his, uh, difficulty in the second game? No, he's just an ass. Yeah, he kind of is. I like, don't know if he... there are very few organization members that you can say is purely a dick, and he's... Zelda the... is one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, I would say that, uh, Xemnas is quite quite the dick. That's, yeah, I suppose. Um, Lord and Keen. I've got, I've got one Dark Horse answer. Dark Horse answer. Uh, I want to say Timon. What? I really do not like Timon in the what? game. What? Every time he says something, I just... Uh, it's like, why did you open your mouth? You just oh. had to say the randomest or stupidest, completely unnecessary comment. Just to, just to clear things up, we are talking about the... The meerkat. The meerkat from The Lion King. Yeah. A Disney character. You're killing off a Disney character. Do you hey, know how many the, children's dreams you're killing off? Hey, the one in the movie was fine. I like Nathan Lane. He's great. But the one in Kingdom Hearts 2 sucks. Okay, I thought you were, I thought you were saying, like, even in The Lion King, he needs to die. Oh, no, no. Just the one okay. in Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, there He's are a few... annoying, and he needs to die. Hmm. In that case, I can't completely disagree with you there. <laughs> but I don't also completely agree with you as well. Fine. I feel like that's enough. a failed idea. I know it's a very polarizing answer. <laughs> that is. That, that you just started World War Three. Congratulations. Wow. I have New topic. Power. Yeah. <laughs> don't get used to it. Just kidding. But of course, my number one would be Larkscene. I hate her so much. Uh, the Savage Biatch. She's... She is definitely... Ah, yeah, she gets under your skin. Mm-hmm. She's and she's a great character because she does that. She still needs to die when she's killed. So yeah. it's like, oh, were there thirteen of you that were revived? <laughs> no, Larkzy doesn't count. Where, and everybody would be cheers. like the biggest psych out if her human form was actually the nicest person. Oh my gosh, that'd be so freaking weird. Like see her like in a dress that's all <laughs> pink and she's skipping with flowers, throwing them everywhere. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think I would hate her more. <laughs> She's a barefoot hippie, runs around in the rain during a thunderstorm. Yeah, like, tugging trees and stuff. I want to see someone draw that now. <laughs> Please, send us hippie, your fan art. Hippie we'll Lurkseen. post it in the magazine. It'll, it'll go straight to the magazine if somebody draws that. Please. I promise you. Uh, maybe I'll draw that. Hell no. Alright. Question numero dos. The most attractive character... Tough I one. actually had a cut, huh? Tough one. Yeah. I actually had a conversation the other day with a few people about this. Mm-hmm. And? But, well, based on just pure looks, nothing else, I think that's a, not much of a contest for me. I'm listening. Aqua. Because of, uh, uh, you know, her blue hair that's so attractive. You gotta have blue hair. Yeah, blue hair's hot. I mean, look at Syax. He's got a lot of fangirls. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, blue hair. That's that's why. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as like personalities, like if you were to go on a date with one, which one would you choose? That's a little. That's a little bit tougher. Because mm. Aqua's a little more dull, in my opinion. As far I'm as I'm going wise. to modify that answer and say, English dubbed Aqua is dull. Okay. Japanese yeah. dubbed Aqua. I think it's nice enough. I agree with that. I would date her. Mm. I don't know. Maybe... Oh, that's a toughie. Because we, we really have... Based on just original KH, we have four characters to... Five characters to really choose from. And one of them's Lark Scene, so she doesn't count. Well, I don't know. Um, if, you, if you happen to have very well-grounded boots, then maybe you want to take a shot at it. Yeah, if you're into that Yandere, let's go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. um, if you make have sure, a death make, wish. Make sure she's not carrying any knives when you take her to the restaurant, that's all. Is she, is she Can't she, like, spawn them, like, keyblades, just... Or yes, something? yes. Yeah, so you're out of luck if you get on her bad side. 
No, if, just just don't carry expect around, breaking up. Just with carry her. around a bucket of water to dump on her if she gets out of hand. Oh gosh, <laughs> she might die. Which I'm okay with. Carry a bucket of water. Car carry a tank, please. I believe that's what happened in the uh, Chain of Memories manga. Really? I, b I believe they sprayed her with water. Huh, that's funny. Maybe just kind of making a quick decision here because I don't have all day to think about this. Mm -hmm. Out of the four answers, Aqua, Kairi, Namine, and Shion. Oh, actually, was Olet a Final Fantasy character? Uh, no. No, she oh. was not. Maybe Olet then. Hmm. She's cheerful. Nice. She's cheerful and so, yeah. Hmm, maybe. Okay, what about Disney characters? It's, it's kind of a weird question because most of them are anthropomorphic. I just slaughtered that word, but you get the picture. Well, Most of them are mainly animals. So. Not, in King, not in Kingdom Hearts. I okay, think. well... But they do all have re really weird proportions. That is true. They don't have very realistic waistlines at all. Or Meg. A anything. Meg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'd have to think about this more in depth. Mm -hmm. But some that come into mind... Um, I don't know. You got anybody? Uh, not really. Not really. It's not really. They yeah. they they don't really have much depth in Kingdom Hearts. Like yeah. Like. But even if you were to go for the original adaptations, uh, I don't know. I think the only one that I can think of is the maybe Grand Bell? Castle Woman. The Grand Castle Woman. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! All right, her right away. No, um, maybe Bell. All right. I don't know. That's all I can really think of at this moment. Hmm. Um. That's about it. Yeah. And I'm gonna just go ahead just to fill out the, just to make sure I we answer completely. I would say probably the most attractive male character. Is you know, I was gonna bring that up too. Probably so. Axel slash Lee. Axel Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Partly it's because. Partly because of the voice. Yeah, that Quentin Flynn man. Yeah, he knows his business. He does. He he has it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful. Um, a little, a little. It's kind of weird because you know you started out with Kingdom Hearts as like small, a small child, and then you kind of grew up and you've got older than the main characters. So, um, I might say something like I would probably go Roxas. Okay. Even though that he's like younger than me, which just sounds weird, but maybe if there were an older version of him, yeah, if you, yeah, aged up Roxas, maybe. Yes, I think I'd go for him. Fair enough. All right. This this means nothing. Yowie fangirls, put your put your pom poms away and your confetti and stuff. This means nothing. All right. So which character? This is, oh, these are all these are all still from Roxas Nobody. Which character, villains, main characters, anyone, is most likely to win a wrestling tournament? So this was uh, a very strange question. Kinda. Uh okay. Who's the buffest character? Uh, I'm thinking that would be Lexius. Lexius. Oh yeah. Thinking maybe Hercules, but then ooh, Lexius. Um, maybe. Uh, Hercules because of his god powers, but without his god powers. Yeah. Also, I don't know if he's really into grappling. He's more of a punching type. If it was boxing, if it was boxing, then maybe. I mean, yeah. it would probably be impossible to um, like pin Hercules, but I don't think he's really, you know, the wrestling type. Mm-hmm. I've always imagined Zaldan kind of the same. Not not quite as buff, but a little bit more buff than. The rest of the members. Kind of a bigger build than the rest of them. Mm -hmm. it, uh, save for Lexius, of course. Um, so, maybe he would stand a chance a little bit? I, I guess. That would be in, like, the upper weight class yeah. fights. Besides that, I, I would have to go with Lexius. Mm -hmm. So, number four, what's your f least favorite world? Hmm... Least favorite world. This is easy for me. <laughs> Are you going to say Atlantica? Yes. <laughs> Besides Atlantica, what's your least favorite world? That's a better question. All right. Now I can think about this one. Okay. Um, uh, here's one, but it's kind of an interesting answer, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 
Olympus Coliseum in Kingdom Hearts 2 for the storyline. Okay, yeah. Because, well, first of all, I am of the opinion that Kingdom Hearts 2 is the game where people, where all the characters do and say really stupid things. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Uh, and the biggest example is in Olympus Coliseum, where, uh, all right, here's the situation. Hercules fights in the Coliseum a lot. Mm -hmm. He's fighting all the monsters that Hades sends him, and he is really tired. Mm -hmm. So Meg, since she's concerned, decides to go to Hades and ask him to go easy on Hercules. <laughs> this is this is the yeah. first this is the first really stupid thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, Sora and company come uh, to Olympus Coliseum. They basically save Meg from Heartless, and mm -hmm. she fills them in on the situation and tells them her plan. Now, they don't know that Hades and Meg are not in the best of, um, they don't know their history. Mm -hmm. So they don't know that this is an incredibly bad idea. Mm -hmm. But then Sora volunteers that they go and talk to Hades and ask him for her. Yeah, now, let me just go talk to Satan for you and maybe, and you know, yes. maybe we can work something out. Yes, know? but here's the, yes, that, and also... Although he doesn't know about what Meg, uh, what happened between Meg and Hades, mm -hmm. they do know that Hades knows them because mm -hmm. they basically ruined his plans. And if you count um, the Colosseum cups in the First Kingdom Hearts, then they actually defeated Hades in battle. Mm -hmm. He's clearly not going to forget that, but they still think that this is a good idea. This is yeah. the second, the second stupid thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so then they go up to uh, Hades' uh, chamber, where Hades just released Arin. This is yep. another fairly stupid thing, because Hades calls him the mother of all bad guys, which makes no sense. Mm -hmm. but, that's, but that's pretty much besides the point. Anyway, um, Hades is angry at Arin because Arin... Uh, gives him his awesome badass line that he's not going to do what he wants. Yeah. Uh, and then Sora comes in. Hades is pissed, and he's throwing fireballs. And Arryn says, we gotta run. And Sora says, but I gotta talk to Hades. <laughs> yeah, I remember that now. It's like, do you think this is really the time okay, to have so, a meaningful conversation with Hades? Yes, that is number three. So then they go back all the way while Hades is chasing them, and they can't fight him because he's in god mode, and they're in the underworld, so they mm -hmm. have to make their way all the way back to the outer chamber. Mm -hmm. And then they do, and then uh, Cerberus comes, they fight Cerberus, and they escape to the uh, entrance to the underworld. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they go uh, to the Colosseum, where they talk to Hercules. And then yeah. Hades comes, and he... He's going to set the whole thing up uh, where he kidnaps Meg and they have to unlock the Underdrome. But while he's talking to Hercules, Sora says, Oh, that's right. Hades, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing he could possibly say because yeah. he's clearly setting it, uh, he's clearly setting this up and there is not a chance in the hell pun Somewhat intended that Hades is going to do anything, any favor for Hercules. And it's just so or Sora, for so that matter. Much, so much stupidity oh, in, this, gosh. in this story. You know, I never really looked at it like that. But now that you mention that, that was uh, kind of a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Yes. Of all of those. Yeah, wow. and that's not even counting all the times that Sora asks the randomest people if they know where Riku is. Oh gosh! Oh, you saw that post? Yeah, I did see that. That <laughs> post on the Tumblr. Yeah. Um. He asks like the freaking Emperor of China, freaking Santa Claus. He asks Santa Claus, "Do you know where Riku is?" <laughs> of course he was, because of course he would be, but he's because he's watching everyone. But it's like and you're he... talking to these people that are like so far above you, and you're like, "Yo, where's Riku?" Yeah, and he's like, he, he says to Beast, if you hear anything about Riku, let me know. Mm -hmm. And then he leaves. Yeah, and it's like, that's it. <laughs> How is yeah. Beast going to let him know? Yeah, so anyway, that's my least favorite world. Just okay. because of all the headbanging. 
Mm-hmm. All the face palming and head desking. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I would say that's a pretty legitimate one. <laughs> um. I don't know if I can come up with anything in depth. Uh Kind of quickly going through the worlds in my head. You can say deep jungle because it sucks. Oh yeah, thank you. I didn't even touch the first game yet. Deep jungle because it sucks, and because they have yet to secure the rights, so it sucks even further. <laughs> Because they couldn't fix their sucky first round. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job. Um, I'm sure it wasn't too bad. I'd say... Yeah, I'm going to go with Deep Jungle. Alrighty. Wasn't a fan of Deep Jungle? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so... Those were from Roxas Nobody. Thank you, Aaron, for those fun questions. Mm-hmm. Um, this one comes from Axia, and we talked about this a little bit earlier in the first part. But we, um... Something I did want to touch on a little bit. Uh, his question says something along the lines of, he'd like to hear us talk specifically about Yen Sid's mention of Terra being the only Lost Master left to find, uh, which implies that Aqua's been discovered. So. That is um, a, that's a very interesting line that he did. Yeah. That he just that, threw out there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's funny that uh, Sid calls Terra a Lost Master, even though he did not pass the mark of mastery. Wait, was that the actual line that he used? He actually. I said- do believe so, yeah. Um, I don't remember if this was in Recoded or Dream Drop that he said it. Uh, I think that is the uh, secret ending from Recoded. Okay. Uh, before it was before and after uh, the remix. Yeah, not, not including the 2.5 extra ones. Right. The original secret ending, yeah. Um... It's it's funny that he uses those words. I'm pretty sure he does use those words. I could be wrong. Um, so, it, but under it, the assumption that it is, excuse me. yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, it implies that not only do they know that where Aqua is in the realm of darkness, uh, it, they didn't really explain how uh, Mickey found out. Oh wait, hang on. What Mickey said was they knew where Ven's heart was, right? Yeah. All right. I don't never, know if they know mind. where his body is or uh, not. That, all right, then never mind. Uh, so they know where his heart is, but they don't know where Terra is, but they do know where Aqua is, apparently. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of weird. Does that, that might have to do with the time that uh, Mickey spent in the Realm of Darkness. Mm-hmm. That's probably the best guess I have. Okay. Um, well, under the assumption that is that Aqua's found and such, it is possibility that since she is the only one that knows where Ven is, that Ven is freed as well, possibly. Or maybe uh, not freed, but at least on the way of being found. Or maybe. Or he was found and uh, uh, well, they just uh, didn't revive him or something. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to submit the fact that at the end of Dream Drop Distance, Ven is still in his room. That's right. He smiles. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, I'm going right. to I'm going to There's a lot of um there's a lot of unknowns about Mickey's time in the Realm of Darkness, as, including things like how he got back. Mm-hmm. Dream Drop Distance was a weird game. It was yeah. Very unclear about a few things, because Sora, or sorry, Riku, technically talked to Diz through Sora's heart and stuff. I think. I'm not well, really it was sure a it was a projection of him. Yeah. A so data gonna, projection. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, is does that mean anything for Diz, or just because it was projection, uh, it doesn't really mean anything, and he's still in uh, yeah. the realm of darkness. He probably is. So yeah, I'm just thinking that I have no idea where Terra could be. I don't know what's happened to him since he went into Xanort. Then Xanort technically died, split off. Terra was still present in Xemnas, um, but Ansem didn't really have the appearance of Terra. Yeah. Uh, and now Xemnas is Xemnas then died. So now Master Xanort's back. So where Terra is, I don't it's know where he could be. It's very confusing. Yeah, and since they're all kind of revived through time and other such things, once again the dream drop thing. Um, but I don't. At, at I don't know where they could be. Sorry, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just saying, I don't know where he could be. Like, he could show up in freaking Disney Castle, and I, I'd accept that. Hmm. Just because it'd be like, yep, yeah, I'm sure that makes sense somehow. Well, the good news is we almost definitely will find out it in the end. Yeah, hopefully. Hmm? Uh, I'm sure we will, though. But I think that's all I have to say on that topic. Any, any other things about that? Nah, that's basically all I got. Okay. And from Keyblade Spymaster, uh, it says, You guys ought to have a name. What would you guys like to call the podcast team? Okay, well... Well, since we're going through some difficulties right now, uh, at the present moment, I don't think a podcast team name is in order quite yet. No, but, I think it's safe to say that. But if we do, uh, if it does call for a name, since this is the round room, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and call us the roomies. The roomies. I kind of like that. Yeah. I think it works. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it, it. It's like we're college buddies or something. The mm -hmm. roomies. <laughs> this is what we do. We sit in our common room and talk about Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, pretty much. And I, okay I do record this in my bedroom, so... We could we could be roommates, mm -hmm. but if we do, if and when we come up uh, with a name, I uh, will let you guys know, and it'll be super duper awesome. Under the assumption the that the Kingdom Hearts Super Friends Group, Super Friends Forever, <laughs> Super Friends Time Group Party, yay! Uh, mm -hmm. And on to the final question from the fifteenth member. Well, there are actually saying, a couple questions from him. Oh yes. Oh, there is a couple of questions. My bad. Um, actually, thank you to Keyblade Spymaster for submitting that. And thank you to 15th member for submitting the following. How much planning goes into making a podcast episode before recording? Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah. Well, um, um well, the, first of all, pretty much the hardest planning uh, issue is, in fact, scheduling. Yeah, scheduling and getting everyone together when they show up. If they show up, yeah, that's the that's by far the toughest part. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, we basically pick uh, a few topics and we come up with our points that we want to talk about mm -hmm. a few days in advance, so that when it comes time for recording, we basically have what to say. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, that's the pre-planning stuff. Aside from that, uh, the rest of the work basically goes into uh, editing the audio together since we each record uh, separately. Mm -hmm. Which, um, for all of our previous episodes, were done by Chaser. So you will have to talk, since he's not here with us right now, you'll have to talk to him and ask him how he does that shenanigans. But he seems to get it done on a, ver a fairly quickly basis, depending on uh, if we all give him our audio on time and soon, which is a kind of a problem for me sometimes. I apologize for that. But besides that, a lot of it is, like, what we're talking about is improv And we just basically, topic, talk about it, say what you want, go. Yep. So there's not much of a time limit that we can place on that. And the final question from our fans, what made each of you join the wiki? Well, alrighty. You can go first. Okay. Um, I don't remember the specific thing that said, okay, I'm going to create an account and be cool and do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or at least do stuff. I got, I got some part of that out. Um, but I, when I was playing through the games, uh, I didn't actually get into the games until I was in like middle school. So when I was playing through the games for the first time, I would, uh, go through uh, I would find myself on either cagewiki.com or the keyhole at the time. I didn't know the difference, so I probably ended up on both of them numerous times. So there was one point, I think I remember, um, on the main page, there would be trivia that would rotate, and there would be uh, quotes that would rotate mm -hmm. um, based on like the choose option template thing. I thought that that was just a daily thing, and I had... It was called Quote of the Moment. That's right. I thought that was a daily type of thing. I didn't know that you could refresh the page and get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so I would kind of check that out. Um, like, it wasn't an everyday thing, but every once in a while, 
I would check that out, see see what new things I could learn. And <laughs> then <laughs> and then I kind of explored the website a little bit, uh, went to some of the forums, saw people bickering at each other, It'd be like, Hey, I wanna do this. Yeah, <laughs> bickering. Yeah. Rock on. Yeah. Um and I saw the login button and I kind of made an account. Um that's what it's there for. That's that's pretty much what I did. It's not the most interesting story. I'm pretty sure everyone else's is similar. <laughs> uh, do, do you have anything uh, similar to that, Newman's? Well, let's see. I didn't actually start playing Kingdom Hearts until uh, senior year in college. Hmm. How old uh, are you? Wait, no, that's not right. Uh, junior year. And, How old are you, Newman's? Uh... Holy crap, you're old. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, so the first, actually the first um, exposure I had to like the game wikis, actually I started uh, with the Final Fantasy wiki mm-hmm. back when they still had coverage of Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. And that was actually where I made my first uh, significant con- contribution to you know a wiki. They were actually debating uh, the keychain on Oathkeeper keyblade because they had uh they were basing it they were basing their description off of like the chain of memories artwork which had it as nominee's lucky charm Mm -hmm. instead of Kyrie's. and i'm like okay look guys here's this very good footage on youtube a very good close-up of the keychain that is clearly Kyrie's good luck charm and they're like oh yeah whoops so that was my first major edit on a wiki. But then um, I didn't get into the Kingdom Hearts wiki until I started playing Days. So that was uh, fall 2009. Mm-hmm. And my first edits were actually immediately reverted because I was making edits on the weapons articles, the stat boxes, and what I did not know at the time was that there are hidden stats that you cannot see from the uh, menu. Mm-hmm. And so I promptly got my stuff uh, reverted. And, <laughs> and good buddy Crichton contacts me on my page and says, uh, look, you can't do this because it's not actually right. And I'm like, oh, uh. got it. So shortly after that, I actually got the... Uh, player's guide and uh, started making edits, small edits here and there, making sure that I actually knew what I was doing, comparing uh, my work to other articles that were already there. And um, and every so often I actually wrote a full article, like for Mission Zero from uh, the multiplayer in Days. Uh. Uh, somebody made up a weird article for it that kind of that was kind of actually about the story before the first mission which is actually in the story and everybody was like no you're not doing it right actually I think that was uh, Dorsey who was doing that and then I came in and like okay this is not actually happening so I rewrote the entire article based on the multiplayer mission and it worked out pretty nicely Hmm. and then Basically, from there, I uh, I basically watched uh, the other established editors like uh, Crichton and Bebop Kate and all the others, mm-hmm. and basically learned my way to being an editor. And every so often, there was this there would be this random person who would edit, and I would undo it and say, or okay. Uh, look, these other people have been here way longer than you, and they know what they're talking about, so I think you should trust them on this. <laughs> so that was when they were making, like, stupid edits. Mm-hmm. And that's how that started. Oh, okay. And yeah. then, yeah, so, actually, I got really active pretty quickly, so I ended up becoming a moderator after, like, six months. Then. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and then I think I became an admin after I'd been on the wiki for about a year. And then after the move, or when the move happened, that was like craziness. That was in 
uh, winter 2011. That's when we made the move away from Wikia. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! God. <laughs> oh, screw our history. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, well, it all ended up working out. But basically, it was me and Crichton running the show uh, in the new location for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, my, I didn't have quite the uh, fantastic uh, early years of my editing career. Um, I started... I joined on April 2011-ish. I don't remember the exact date. I think it's like April 4th, maybe? Something along the lo those lines. Um, I didn't actually edit a main space article from my account. I, I might have done some in-on edits, I don't remember. But until May 21st, 2011, um, to the Kingdom Hearts 2 page. Um, I thought it got reverted, but apparently it didn't, or maybe it didn't until much later. But I made, like, one edit there, but a majority of my first year or so was not actually doing anything productive. Oot. Huh? <laughs> yeah, um, so that I didn't have the best start to that. But eventually later, I joined... Because I joined right after the split and right before the merge. I had no idea what was going on. I tried to voice my opinion on a few things, mm -hmm. but they were kind of, like, stupid and uninformed and just shot down. It was a pretty because I had no time. idea. Yeah, because I had no idea what I was talking about or doing. But I don't think I ended up being moderator until, like, everyone laughed. And, <laughs> and they're like, well, we need somebody, so I guess you're all we got. <laughs> and uh, I think it was two or three years. I want to say two years after being on here, I was a moderator. And then six months later, admin on the keyhole. Yeah. So, yay, I get to join the cool admin club. Or, no, I get to join the admin club. I'm not... I'm not in the cool admin Columbia, get in there. You get your own <laughs> keychains. Yes, you you get the little uh, keyblade on your user page, and it makes you feel a little bit special. Mhm, mm absolutely. But yeah, that was pretty much how I joined the wiki. I I joined the dot net. Um, I'm sorry, cagewiki dot com. Uh, post merge. Uh huh. I think. I mean, the login information carried over, but. Pretty much. I didn't start editing there until post-merge, and I didn't become active there until a few months ago, I want to say, earlier this year, because I was doing some Dream Drop stuff earlier. And I'm still not totally active. Well, I'm not totally active anywhere right now, but... Yeah. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You are a productive member of our wiki society. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I try sometimes. <laughs> um... And since we're getting rather close to um, the time to go, mm -hmm. uh, I, one last question I want to ask Newman's. Uh, actually, two-part question. Answer as fast as possible. Um, how did you get your username, and how did you um, uh, how did you get to Kingdom Hearts? How did I get to Kingdom Hearts? Yes, if right. you can make that a short story. All right. Well, my username is basically comes from my name. Mm -hmm. That's the very short answer, and that's the nickname answer. the nickname Nezzy is actually, uh, I think Crichton gave me that one. Mm. Good buddy Crichton. Yeah. Um, as for Kingdom Hearts, I guess the short answer is, back in the day when it first came out, I saw a bunch of commercials and thought, huh, that looks interesting. And then when YouTube became a thing, I started watching the introduction. And then I started watching a whole bunch of walkthroughs. And then I just went downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds about right. Yeah, um, there was... Yeah, I wa watched the opening like a million times. It was awesome. <laughs> and uh, there were a couple of walkthroughs that were really, really, like, exceptional. Like, now there are still a number of them that are really good. The one mm -hmm. that 
I remember, which no longer exists, unfortunately, mm-hmm. was by Zaldin, who was uh, actually a staff member at KH Vids. Oh, yeah. But his his account got taken down, which is too bad, because he was also, uh, I suppose he still is wherever he is these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also did uh, remixes of uh, video game music, and actually some oh. original music, too. And uh, even after his uh, Zaldin KH Bids account got taken down, he had a couple of accounts under a different name, but they also got taken down, which is really, really unfortunate, mm. because his music was good. Uh, you can actually You can actually still listen to one of his original pieces. There is one video. Uh, it is a video that basically showcases the animations from the Lingering Will, uh, his battle animations, from Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. And it's set on a white background. It's really low quality, but the music in the background is actually from that guy, uh, Zaldin from KH Vids. Although oh, okay. he uh, basically did it under a different name. Uh, it's a very nice bit of work, and I, uh, luckily saved, uh, those pieces on my computer, Mm. those musical, uh, tracks. Uh, yeah, and his is actually the, the footage that I showed when I was making that argument about the Oathkeeper. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, oh, that's, hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of... That's how I got into Kingdom Hearts. Ah. I didn't start playing until I didn't start playing until I had friends who had PlayStation 2s that I could borrow. Yeah. Uh, um going quickly, Chain of Fire. Um I think I tried stuff with like Axel in, in it, probably. But I think a majority of it was I didn't want to have Axel in my name because of the main space article I didn't want to get it confused with. Mm-hmm. So I tried to think something more creative. So it comes from uh Chain of Memories, which I don't know why I included that. I guess it just sounded cool at the time, but even though it's one of my least favorite games. Uh-huh. Um, chain of Memories, so that's where you get the chain of, and then Axel's, Axel wields fire, and he's my favorite character, so Chain of Fire. There you go. Or a cough, for short. Or coffee, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're chrono, it's like coffee. Um, and then I got into Kingdom Hearts because uh, my friends are my power. That's it. <laughs> All right. Basically, they showed it to me. They were showing Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy to me at the same time, so I often got the two mixed up, um, which might sound hard for some people. Mm-hmm. But considering the um, the they were made by the same people, it's kind of understandable. It's like Kingdom Hearts is the one with the Disney and the keys and color, more colorful animation stuff. Yeah. So I watched a lot of uh, things like uh, Final Fantasy VII stuff. And the I don't remember what Final Fantasy it's from, but it's from some wedding that this girl jumped from. Ah, that would be ten. Ten. Okay. Yes. I I watched that cutscene. Uh, Advent Children. Even though I had basically no idea what was going on, it was still cool. <laughs> and oh, it's still this cool. That was a good movie. Yes, it still holds a very special place in my heart. So just things like that. My friends got into it. We we kind of formed our own little club around it, and it was a good time. It was fun. And that was a, and I got into it around. I was first introduced to it as okay. There's this cool thing called Kingdom Hearts, and this game called 358 over two days is coming out in a in a week. So <laughs> imagine that time frame. Yeah. And then and I didn't join the wiki till after Birth by Sleep came out. So imagine those time frames. Mm-hmm. That actually reminds me. I I forgot a step in my introduction to Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a long-time subscriber to Nintendo Power, and mm. um, so they covered Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, so that was, I guess, my next, or a bit of exposure that I did get before I started scouring YouTube for videos. Mm. Okay. Which is fair, since that was still like a couple of years before YouTube. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. And with that, I think we are going to end this podcast, so... I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did, because we enjoyed this quite a bit. Um, And with that, I bid thee a very Merry Christmas, which has already been had at the time of this recording. So I hope you had a Merry Christmas. 
and a happy new year to everybody. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, hope this next year brings in new surprises, uh, new Good users, surprises. lots of fun projects, and the like. I look forward to it, and I can't wait to see what becomes of it. Yep. So, until next time, this is Chain of Fire. And I am Nezzy. And we will see you in... January, February, March, April. April or something like that. So, until then, have a good until one. Until our next episode. Yes. Bye. Peace out.